Hello, I'm Brad the Framer at Carlin's Gallery, and today we'll be covering the matting and mounting of watercolor originals. I picked one of Carlin's originals here, and the first thing you have to know is that it needs to be fairly flat before you start. This is flat enough. We use a press here at Carlin's, but if you have a ripply watercolor original at home, You'd like to spritz it with the back with your fine mister or some other sprayer. Put it on something flat, protect it with a towel or a piece of release paper, and then you can press it with an iron on steam setting. Get it nice and warm, hot and soft, and then lay a book or something over it until it cools. The next part is to select a mat. I've picked this one. I like the green around the edge. I like the contrast. And I like this because it'll show up well on the camera that we're using here today. What I'd like to find out, first of all, is how wide the sides are. Generally, your mats will be the same all the way around unless they're bottom weighted. But even ones that have the hole or the window centered are going to have some variation. And I always like to have the, the widest one on the bottom. So this is three and a quarter. This is three and five sixteenths. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. That makes this slightly wider than the other three. You maybe can't tell, but it is. And when we're finished and it sits down into your picture frame, Gravity is going to take over and it should even out. So if that's the bottom, that makes this the top. And I'm going to mark that so I remember it. Set it aside. And then get the backing. Acid-free backing. I'm just leaving the picture under there for now. And we want to set this up so the tops are together. We're going to hinge the top of the mat to the top of the backing, getting it even side to side. And then I'm going to weigh it down so it doesn't move. We stack glass. This is layers of glass stacked together, a little bit of foam core on the back to soften it, and then wrapped up with packing tape. So when it's put together like this, and especially with a single mat, you'll notice again that this is a double. But even though it's two layers thick, it's still sitting below the surface. We like these surfaces to be even. So I always take a little bit of mat board. You can use just about anything that's hard. And that will raise the mat up so that it's at the same height. All right, putting the weight back on. Now I'm going to hinge these together using artist tape, inch and a half wide artist tape. Pulling out a piece that's almost as wide as the backing. Cut that and stick that down here, right down the middle to cover both. You can kind of see where the seam is and you press it down. You can use your hand, I like to use a brayer. Right, now I can take the weight off, fold it, push down on it, oh, watch out for the artwork, push down on it and seam it so it makes a nice book-like hinge. Okay, then it will not wiggle around relative to the backing. Now, we get our painting back here. And set it in about what looks like the middle. And fold her up again. Make sure the bottom is where you want it. And so, I didn't quite hit that quite right, but that's okay. Going to move it around. We make it so it covers about a quarter of an inch all the way around. 
That's just the way the, the windows are cut to fit with the size paper that Carlin paints on. Okay, once that's there, I'm going to weight that down, and if you'll excuse me, I'm going, I might end up sticking my head into the view here, just to make sure that it's covered completely. Okay, it's covered. We like to hinge it to the mat, to the backing, rather than to the mat. It's easier to take apart if you need to someday. You can save the mat. All right, so what I'm going to do here is move this down a little bit. We don't want it too high because we're going to be slipping tape underneath this. So I want it mostly down here and get the tape ready. This is water activated linen framers tape. And here comes my dog. Hello, Roxy. I hear your toenails. That's all right. Yeah, you just sit there. All right, I'm pulling off about eight inches of water activated or gummed linen framers tape, folding that in half, cutting that in half, folding that in half, and cutting that in half. Now I have four pieces all about the same size. As it is water activated, I have here a sponge on a dish, adding a little water to it. Carlin licks them. I don't care for the taste. So I use the sponge. All right, getting that wet and slipping it underneath the painting, sticky side up or wet side up with just about three quarters of an inch to an inch poking up above the painting. And I'm gonna put a weight on to hold that still. I'm gonna do that to the other side now. A really wide picture, of course, you would use three. And I just moved that, but I'm gonna take a chance that it's gonna be okay. All right, put that on there. Put this back on there to hold that. Now, the T-mount. This is stuck to the back of the painting for obvious reasons. You don't want to have tape on the front of the painting. Now this T-mount crosses over the tape to stick the tape to the backing, not to the front of the painting. We'll do that on that side. And get this wet. And do it on this side. Pressing it down. A little brayer action here. And when we're done, don't forget, don't cover up the signature. A little check on the sides to make sure that it's covered adequately. And we're done. It's ready to be framed.